Hey guys, Aaron Wood with you, and what we're going to do in this video is take a look at the Ares line. Uh, do a quick look here in Arena Commander of both the Inferno, which we see here, and then we will hop into the universe to actually talk about combat a little bit. Um, overall, it is a pretty big ship. Uh, it is uh, a, technically a starfighter, which means you would normally associate this with being a smaller ship, but it's really closer to a heavy fighter, not only with the fact that you've got a size 7 Gatling gun on it, uh, but also just in physical size. It's a ship that was literally built around a weapon. It's kind of the space version of a uh, A-10, if you will. Um, and you really have two different versions. Uh, this version is the one that's really designed to uh, throw ballistics downrange and really do a lot of physicalized damage to a ship. Uh, you get the value of being able to penetrate through shields. Um, and overall, it does what ballistics do. Uh, rate of fire on the weapon is pretty high. Um, you can see here that it actually shoots at a much faster clip than you would expect it to. Um, one thing that you will notice, especially in combat later, is that it seems that there is a relatively large cone of fire from the weapon, uh, but not to get into that too much at this point. Uh, in the cockpit, you have a lot of really good visibility, uh, not a lot of obstructions from the uh, struts or anything. Uh, buttons are logically laid out with a lot of them being functional, which is great to see. Uh, and that's really the entirety of the uh, inside of the ship. Uh, reason being is that everything else on this ship is basically space for you know weapons and storage and everything like that. So uh, we will do a quick tour of the outside. Um, one of my favorite things about this ship though is actually this honeycomb design on the Inferno. I really wish that was a part of the design on the Ion. It just uh, kind of part of the skin that this one got, which is kind of nice. Um, I also like the way that the, web, the missiles are currently underslung. Um, I initially kind of thought these were going to be bespoke, but you can swap them out for other weapons, so you will see that those actually get replaced with uh, missile racks, um, you know, if you do play with the configuration some. Uh, I also like that it shares the design language from other Crusader ships, where you have the uh, kind of gaps in the wings, uh, kind of creating that negative space and giving you a really nice feel of the ship. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, do a quick uh, exit on the ship. Uh, we will look at where we have components uh, located. Uh, um, they are really down the spine and off to the side. Ones that are not in the game right now, um, some of them open, some of them don't. So like life support doesn't open right now. Um, radar and scanner isn't opening right now, but shield generators you'll see that you can actually open. And you've got your uh, two size two shields that pop out there for you. A little bit further back, again, these are all actually um, labeled for you. So you have your jump uh, jump engine right here. You also have your quantum uh, computer. It doesn't actually look like there's a physical component for that yet, so it doesn't actually open. A little bit further back, um, uh, that was the lid for that one. <laughs> uh, we got a cooler right here. Pops up, looks like a cooler. Uh, and then towards the back of the ship, um, but you'll actually have a little bit further down if I can get my controls to cooperate. Um, here we go. Another cooler and another cooler on the this side over here. Uh, as we get to the back of the ship, I believe those are quantum measure uh, or countermeasure markers or launchers, excuse me. Uh, and then over here you have two of my favorite areas on this. Um, eventually you're going to be a little bit limited in what you can carry on your ship. Um, so these two sections down here are going to be pretty valuable for you. Um, this is gonna be your weapons locker. I showed this off a while back with the Gladius, but you have the option to put some weaponry in here. So if you do get restricted on being able to carry a long arm on, on your body and not being able to get in to the cockpit, you could actually load up your weapons here and then pull them out once you land. Uh, storage here is really just going to be for a small ship storage, so things of, uh, you know, additional like med supplies or uh, potentially like ammunition or whatever it may be. You do have a little bit of storage actually built in on the ship. Now you got some nice branding through here uh, on the ship itself and really just design overall. Really strong. It's a cool looking ship. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump over and grab the ion, and I will actually show the flight model just a little bit, uh, and then we'll get into the actual combat. And here we have the ion. 
Uh, I like the black skin on the Inferno better, mostly because I like the honeycomb. Um, that being said, there's something about this white skin that's very Crusader. It feels like a mini version of the MSR. Uh, it's clean looking and it shares basically the same design everywhere else. Uh, one of the major changes here is that you can obviously see you don't have a major size 7 Gatling gun. You have a size 7 energy cannon. Uh, and it is pretty potent when it fires. Um, it almost shakes the entire ship, which is kind of an interesting effect. Uh, other than that, you basically have the uh, same uh, component housings, so you can walk around and find all of those parts of the ship uh, on this one as well. From a flight model perspective, uh, you know it rolls adequately, it pitches adequately, if not slow, it yaws, Okay, it's not a great flying ship, but you have to remember the size of this. It feels like a fighter because it's only a cockpit, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the actual intended, um, you know, flight model. It's just not intended to be that, um, you know, nimble fighter. It is agile enough to deal with some of the smaller fighters if you're smart about your engagement distances and how you apply reverse strafe but it can easily get overwhelmed by some of the smaller and faster ships out there. Uh, against some of the bigger ships, which is actually its primary target, uh, it's agile enough to try and stay out of the way of their line of fire, but you're not going to just be flat out avoiding shots. It's just not how this ship is really meant to do things. Um, as far as the acceleration, it was bugged and it was like the highest uh, accelerating ship or highest uh, forced accelerating ship. Uh, it is no longer that as far as I'm aware. Uh, and what you end up having now is a ship that has decent speed um, and great fuel supply, especially quantum fuel. Uh, it got bumped up to 5,000, which means that you can easily throw on the super fast quantum drives uh, and end up being able to go across the verse several times without having to worry about refueling. Uh, that is a expensive way to do things though, because eventually when you have to top off the tank, you have to you know pay to do the quantity that you have actually used. Uh, and luckily quantum fuel is relatively cheap compared to hydrogen, um, but it is a factor. So uh, choose your drive to your liking and overall, that's kind of our flight model and what we have. Uh, the Aries are really about combat, so we will go ahead and switch over to some combat footage and we will talk through that. So now that we're actually in combat, let's talk about the two ships and how they do. Overall, the Ares is a monster, which was really to be expected. Uh, I think the first thing to call out with all of this is that the testing that I've done so far has been against NPCs and the Persistent Universe because they're easier to find and hunt uh, and they're generally the money-making option when it comes to fighting, mostly because the time sink that you put into finding and hunting players is just not a lucrative endeavor. However, good players are far better than NPC. So you need to understand that watching this isn't going to be a great analog for how this ship would fare against a skilled player. With that, that out of the way though, let's break down some of my impressions of the Ion and the Inferno in the verse. CNG's been playing with the numbers and how they want to balance these ships in the verse, which is reasonable considering the size of weaponry and the threat that they possess. We've seen the rate of fire and the damage drop on the Ion, only to have the rate of fire uh, drop again and the damage climb back up. Uh, the Inferno has seen uh, ammo increases, the damage numbers have moved around, and rate of fire changes. But I think we've heard that where they stand today is where they will be at launch of 3.15.1 going live. Some overall notes about combat. The flight model means that we pretty much have a similar flight model to the Vanguard, which means that you have adequate roll, pitch, and yaw, while not something that is going to blow you away. And that kind of makes sense, again, based on the size of the ship and knowing that its intended target is larger ships. So while it looks like a fighter and it's named like a fighter, it's really a lot more ship than that. Now, as far as being able to line up with your pips and being able to hit your targets, I would say that really anything about cutlass size or above is a very easy target. However, smaller targets can pose a threat. The best way to manage these is to pair reverse strafe when engaging to try and create some additional distance between you and the target while also not being afraid to bring things to a stop and almost act as a turret to help increase your accuracy if you need to. I will say that the range on these weapons is dependent on your speed and your target speed. I believe when you look at Urkel, it has the range on the Ion's cannon at about 2800 meters, which is surprisingly low considering the size. 
But when you apply your ship speed in the average ship that you're going against, when you have the jousting of them coming towards you, your pip inherits some of some of that and the computer is going to calculate it so you end up seeing an effective range being significantly longer. Which makes me think we're really looking at more of a time to live factor on the round, but I'm not a designer, I don't know. So let's start by looking at the ion which has the size 7 laser cannon on board, which has a surprisingly good rate of fire. I think getting of uh, just about a shot every two seconds. The capacitor without tweaks will give you about 16 rounds before you need to recharge, and with this being a cannon against most targets, you aren't just holding down and burning through the charge, which means you can pretty much line up and fire by clicking whenever you need to. The laser cannon is pretty potent. It pops ships like the M50 and the Prospector in two shots, uh, freelancer miss I went against. Uh, it seemed to take three to four confirmed hits and boom, it was gone as well. Uh, I took the ion out to do a claim jumpers mission, which was actually a lot of fun. Um, and the new missions have the turrets that are more spread out than they were before. And with the range on a moving ion, you're able to take down those turrets before their size four and size five weapons can actually reach out and do a lot of damage to you. Once the prospectors come in, you have enough shields to tank a lot of their damage for a while, and they are very quick to destroy. Uh, I did find that aiming the ion was surprisingly easy, and since you don't have ammo to worry about, missing shots doesn't really penalize you that badly other than just needing to let your capacitor charge back up. Overall, I see the ion as being my go-to bounty hunting ship for HRT and above, considering that the only real concern there is from the, the agility of ships uh, and the size perspective would really be the hurricane that comes in those, which honestly is a slower ship now too. So it's really feasible to do those bounties and probably make some good money um, without having to worry about uh, rearming your weaponry. The Inferno was the ship between these two that I was more looking forward to, mostly because a size 7 Gatling gun is incredibly exciting. And when we see the ammo count of 3,800 and a surprising rate of fire, there's a lot to be excited about. And this is very much a ship of setting expectations from my experience so far, because the most noticeable thing about the Gatling is that there's a fair amount of spread on the bullets like we talked about and showed you before. So you're not really precisely laying down fire. Again, when you remember that the targets for this ship are bigger ships, that doesn't matter as much because it's not hard to hit an interest, right? Um, and unless you're really trying to pinpoint a subcomponent. Um, but aside from that, when you take this against ships that have smaller frontal profiles like the Arrow or the Gladius or the Saber and the Eclipse, um, they can be hard to hit, especially the further away they are. Since you do have a limited ammo amount in the Gatling, I would say that when you use this ship against smaller ships, um, I would trust your shields, allow them to get a little bit tighter and enclose that distance, and then start opening up under 2,000 meters. Um, I would also say that as you are approaching the jousting point, I would definitely start nosing up so you get a lot more fire on the flat part of their ship and doing more damage in the close range with a higher success of hitting your shots. When the gun lands shots, targets pop very quick. Against larger targets though, cuddies and freelancers, they end up being vaporized quickly. And when I did a rescue mission and there were four commies that spawned, they all went down without a lot of effort. They lasted longer than I expected them to, but they do have size 3 shields now, so that plays a role in eating through them. Overall, the Ares is a beautiful ship that's fun to fly and concede when you put it in the right situation. I'm really looking forward to ranking up my bounty chain again to start doing HRTs, VHRTs, and ERT missions, leveraging these ships, especially the Ion, to be able to stay out for extended periods of time without worrying about the rearming aspect of things. I think it'll be interesting watching how people counter these ships with smaller vessels and how the balance of the verse changes when ships like this and the Redeemer almost start a new arms race and leave others behind. Either way, I'm officially a Crusader fanboy, so the more I get to play with and the more I can use, the happier I am and give me size 7 weapons, and I'm a pretty happy boy. So that's it for now. I appreciate you all watching. If you guys have questions, get them in the comments. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot more coming soon, and have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.